David's shaking his head up and down, so I know I have hit this nail right on the head. Two heavy doors. It had the, the cool flip-up headlights that still worked in 1984 from 1968, so it was really cool. It had the sound system in it. I don't know what kind of sound system it had, but it could deafen you two cars, two cars over if you let it. The song, uh, the song was more than a feeling. The band was Boston. The album was Boston, Boston. So does anybody remember Boston, Boston? I remember that it was when I heard that song, More Than a Feeling, for the very first time. I didn't even know who Boston was at the time. Well, instead of sit here and talk about it, why don't, why don't, why don't we play just a little bit of that song so we can kind of go back in the Wayback Machine. Go ahead, man. Yes. Uh, no lighting your lighters. Don't, don't, don't do it. Resist the urge. Oh, yes, thank you. They could only see that back home. Okay, okay. I remember exactly where I was when I heard that song. Exactly. We were coming down the hill, coming out of my neighborhood in, in Catawba Island, Ohio, this little place right on Lake Erie. There, there was a gate there. Well, it was a gated community, but only in the summertime because we needed to keep the legs out. Now, my dad named them legs. Now, I realize there's a lot of soldiers or ex-soldiers in here, and I'm not talking about legs like naps, like non-airborne personnel. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Lake Erie gawkers, the people that drove 10 miles an hour on the road next to the lake saying, ooh, pretty lake. And they would stop and take pictures, and the speed limit's 45, and they're going five, and they've got their cameras hanging out the window to look at one of the Great Lakes. You know, just amazing, amazing time. I remember who was in the car with me, a guy named Mike Enot, and of course my brother was driving. Mike Enot went on to be a pharmacist, which kind of made sense, uh, if you think about it. <laughs> we were on our way to school. We are on our way to school. I was 15 years old because I, w- I wasn't able to drive yet. So I, I was about 15. And that, that, that was the day when I really found out that I loved music. It was actually the day when I got my first jam ever. And it, it was called that. When you had a song you liked back then, you called it your jam. Right. So... This moment of bridging the gap between generations was brought to you by Boston. Right. It was called, it was called, it was called a jam. That was my first jam. It, actually, it was my second jam. Do you know what my first jam was? You're not going to believe this. Nope. It was Dionne Warwick. <laughs> Dionne Warwick, what's it all about, Alfie? Don't look it up on your phones right now. That, I... For whatever reason, I loved that song, and I couldn't stop singing it, so much so that I got that album for Christmas, and I played it all the time. Yeah, everybody, I didn't know, you know, I was at that in-between place where I didn't know what was cool and what was, so, I mean, I didn't know. I just loved me some Dionne Warwick. That was way before the Miss Cleo days, days, and she went all off off the deep end. Good times, though, good times. Well, as I was listening to that song this week, it, it dawned on me that, that more than a feeling is not a bad definition for what Christian love is. That's, that's, that's not too bad. We, we, can, we can work with that. And the scripture that we have today is kind of going to talk about love as more than just a feeling. The scripture today is from John, it's chapter 15, verses 1 through 13. So if you want to grab your Bibles and pull them out, open it up to John chapter 15. Um, you can pull it up on your smartphone. It'll be on the screen. However, yeah, on your smartphone, you can pull it up on your phone. And uh, if you guys will stand for the reading of the word of this morning, if you're able, that would be awesome. John 15, 1 through 13. It says like this. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I have also remained in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. 
it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. This is the word of the Lord. You guys can go ahead and be seated. So this is a very familiar passage, this parable, the vine and the branches. He shows us through that parable that that we're made to bear fruit. We're made to bear fruit. But we'll only be able to do that, and the size and the quantity, quantity of the fruit depends solely on our connection to the vine. In other words, we can do nothing by ourselves. If we have no attachment to the vine, there will be no fruit, at least no fruit to speak of, nothing that's going to do anybody any good uh, in the long term. So we have to remember one of the points of that parable is we are a dependent people, and there is no way for us to bear fruit without Jesus, no way at all. But what, is the, what we're going to talk about this morning is actually what the fruit is. And one of the fruits is love. Well, what is this love? What, is it, what does it look like? How does it act? How do we walk in it? Is it a feeling? Is it more than a feeling? I think it is. So let's start. We're going to really focus on verses 9 through 13 this morning. So let's start there. Verse 9 says, As the Father loved, has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. So love is the thing that God uses. He uses it to connect us to the vine. He used it to be, for us to be his disciples. He uses it for us to keep his commands. And it has great benefits, but it is not without trials and tribulations. And anybody who's ever loved anybody else, say amen. Because it's not easy. Because we don't always have our best day or put our best foot forward. And all the husbands and wives said amen too. So, So in verse 9, we find out where that love comes from. That love comes from the Father. The Father loved the Son, and the Son loves us, and and that's that's how we get it. I think sometimes we like to think that we've got this love thing down. I probably, when I was 12, I thought I probably had it down, you know. But that's a different kind of love, right? That's completely different. I think sometimes we think we got at the corner on the market, but but God's saying, no, there there is a way, there there is... this is where love comes from. It comes from the Father we, who, who loved me. And now I'm showing you how to do it the right way. So the Father is the source. The Father is the source and it flows through us. That kind of sounds like Star Wars-ish. The source flows through you. Father is the source of love and it flows through us if we let him. Because well, there's always a choice, right? If we let him, because without him, we are incapable of producing anything. No, nothing of any good, whatever. And here's how it, here's how it works. Whatever you take in, it's like a computer. Like whatever you put in, you, you get out, right? It, it really works the same, same way. Whatever you put in, you get out. So if we're not producing love for our neighbors, for the people... Uh, that we run into for even our enemies, we, we ought to be the kind of people that check the source. We, we, ooh, we check the source. Are we feeding off of love? Are, are we in the word? Are, are we praying regularly? Are we doing things that, that help us be spiritually formed in its image? Or are we watching CNN and Fox News battle it out, switching back and forth and back and forth and back and forth? And there's just turmoil and chaos and hate that's just filled on both sides of that political spectrum. You get caught up in a cycle of anger and, and, and outrage and somebody puts something on Facebook and here I go and wait till I get them. And does, do we type with two thumbs? Yeah, okay. Here I go to get them. Wait, I can't believe he said that. I can't believe he thinks that. We get all wrapped up in that stuff and we forget completely about love. That's the kind of thing, those things, the, the divisive things, the things that, that, that aren't life-giving, those are the kind of things that lead down that road where the branches wither and die, 
where the branches get thrown into the fire and get burned up, that's, that's life-taking kind of stuff. But, but what about the life-giving kind of stuff? What about the, hey, Lord, what are we going to do today? I, I'm here. I'm yours. Where, where are we headed? Who you want me to talk to? Okay, I'll talk to him. I don't like him, but I'm going to talk to him. That's, that's the kind of willingness we got to have, right? The kind of, that's the kind of willingness that this word points to. If we want to be like Jesus, if we want to love people like Jesus loves them, we have to feed on things that will help us go down that road. It's just the way it works. And if we feed off those things, we'll not only f- produce fruit, but we'll produce abundant fruit. And when we're producing abundant fruit and we keep producing it, guess what we're doing? We're remaining in him, just like this first, the second half of the verse says, remain in my love. Because it's not a one-time thing. You can't run up to the altar and say, I do, and then spe- spend the rest of your life saying, I don't. Or, saying, or not saying it, but proving that you don't. You can't run up to the altar and say yes to Jesus, and then run out the doors and say whatever you want, and do whatever you want, and act however you want. That's, that's not how it works. That's not remaining in his love. This, we are being encouraged by the scripture to remain, to stay in his love. And if, we, if, if we're not doing the things that we need to, it's going to be really, really hard to stay there. So... This love is more than a feeling. Well, if it's, if it's more than just a feeling, then we're probably going to be asked to do something uncomfortable, right? Because you kind of know this is coming. Uncomfortable is actually, it's not a bad place. Because believe it or not, I know you're not going to believe this. Believe it or not, you're not always going to feel like doing this. You're just not. You're not always going to feel like it. You know the, the people that you had, you probably had somebody run through your mind right now. Oh, I don't want to be Jesus to him. Or I don't want to be Jesus to her. Or I avoid that place because ugh, I just don't, I don't want to do that. But in order for us to remain in his love, we're not, a, and, and knowing full well that, that, oh, that we're not going to always feel like it, it's going to take sacrifice to do that. It's going to take obedience to do that. And those things are not exactly comfortable topics. Oh, you, everybody's like, I am an obedient and sacrificial person, right? Right, right. We're supposed to be, but, and we have the power to do that, and we have, we have the ability to remain doing that, but we have to remain in it and walk in it every single day for it to happen. Remember, it's not a daily choice. It's something that must continue. It's more than a feeling because we're just honestly not going to feel like it. But we have to look at Jesus' example again and know that he walked this road, that he did it perfectly, that he was obedient to God even when it required him to sacrifice, even when it required him to give up in his own life. And I guarantee you, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was not feeling like it. Remember that time? He was not feeling like it. We know that because he displayed physical evidence tears of blood. He even asked God, if, if it's possible, let this cup be taken from me, but not as I will, but as you will. So the example was set. He suffered, but he was obedient. He, he was obedient, and he sacrificed. That is our example. So when we get to the times when, oh, I really don't want to do that, or I'm not feeling it today, Lord, Remember the garden. Keep, keep, keep walking. Keep, do it anyways. Respond. It's a spiritual response. Do, keep, keep talking. Go talk to him anyways. Do what you're supposed to do. That is the kind of obedience and sacrifice that Jesus, that's the example that he set, even if we don't feel like it. Let's go on to verse number 10. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. And all the math teachers may now stand and look at this beautiful arithmetic statement. It's an if-then geometry statement. If you, remain, if you keep my commands, then you will remain in my love. Wait. So now we got, this is starting to pile on. This is starting to not be good news. 
Okay, so we're going to have to do things we don't feel like doing. Do it when we don't feel it. We're going to have to be obedient and sacrifice. And now we have to follow commands too? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. There are commands to follow. I can't help it. There is. They're written down. There's a big list. Not that it's about the list, but there is a list of commands that we're, we're supposed to follow, right? That's exactly what he's telling the disciples. If you keep my commands, then you will remain in my love. Love is also about keeping commands. He's giving you the commands for a reason, though. He's giving you commands so you have something to be obedient to. That's why he wrote them down. You need to sacrifice in order to follow them. You'll have to make changes in your life in order to keep them. You won't always feel like it because they will cost you something to do them, right? There's always a cost. You don't feel like it and you're obedient, obedient anyways, you just made a sacrifice. You're, you're, you're starting to get it. But if you do those things, you will remain in my love. It is also, even though there's a list, it's also not about the list because it's not about following the list. We don't make the holy checklist for Grace Church member goers type people and spell it all out, make a big list, and then we get up, we look at the list on the refrigerator, here are the things that I need to do today to be holy. Check, prayed, check, did my devotional, check, made my husband bacon, <laughs> check, whatever, whatever's on your holy list, I'm not in your list, so. What? But yes, that's not, it's, it is, there is a list, but it's not about the list, it's about the heart that follows the commandments, not about the list of commandments. That's the kind of love Jesus is looking for, a kind of heart that will follow him wherever he goes, the kind of heart that isn't afraid to sacrifice, that isn't afraid to be obedient, that understand there's commands, but it's not about the commands, it's about the heart that follows the commands. Those things are all very, and there, here's some of the commands. So, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. And the second is like it. Remember this? Remember Jesus said this? And the second is like it. Love your neighbor like yourself. One that's very close to this, this is actually a little bit earlier in John, around 13. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. So we can see through the things we've talked about so far, far that Christian love is definitely more than just a feeling. If it was, we'd probably all be at a football game right now. We'd be somewhere else. We might be eating brunch. There'd be lots of other cool stuff we could be doing right now. But we've, we're willing to sacrifice today to be here. Do you know why? This is really cool. There's, this is really cool. Hold on. I, I, I'm ahead of myself. There's going to be something really cool. Just trust me. But it's in verse 11. Let's read verse 11. I told you this so that, your, that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. It just keeps getting better and better. I don't know if this is even better news. There's joy in obedience. Oh, all right. Yeah, joy in obedience. Well, yeah, actually there is. There's joy in doing the work and the will of the Father. Jesus did it. It was his mission, and likewise, it's ours. There's nothing more fulfilling than doing things the way they're supposed to be done. Yes, joy is definitely a feeling. It is. It's a feeling. And, but the only way to get joy from obedience and sacrifice is to be sold out to Jesus, to be sold out to living your life following him and loving people his way. That's the only way. And let me give you this example. So say you're, you're a kid and you have done something that is just amazing you, you, you sacrificed it was a little bit selfless and you crawl up on your dad's lap and he tells you you did such a great job I'm so proud of you there is almost no better feeling than that in the world imagine whoever you want your grandpa or your grandma whoever there is no better feeling in the world than crawling up in dad or grandpa's lap and having him tell you he's proud of you and did a good job Jesus kind of knows how, what that feels like too. Remember when, he's, when that happened? At, when he got baptized? Heaven opened up. The light shone. God spoke. This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Man, I want that. I'll take the light opening up and everything. I want the whole thing. A lap to appear out of nowhere. I mean, I, I want all of that. 
I, I want all of that. God looked down on him and spoke. And, and there is, you know, here's where it is. There is nothing better than giving God a proud dad moment. Nothing better. And here's, here's the cool thing I was going to say earlier. There's something really cool going on. There's something like really a cool revelation that, that we need to understand. We are wired to be obedient to Jesus. We are wired to find joy in that obedience. That's how we're wired. When we gave our life to Christ, we became new creations. We became new people. We were now wired to follow him in obedience. So when we do that, even though those things are hard, when we walk through those things and talk to the people that we don't talk to, when we go places that we don't want to go and speak in his name, when we represent him in this world, when all those things are happening, he is pleased with us. We find that obedience in following him joyful. And it's not like happiness. That's, that's not, it's not happiness. Chocolate makes me happy. Any kind of chocolate, chocolate with peanut butter on it, chocolate, you know, between graham crackers and marshmallows, uh, dark chocolate, light chocolate, chocolate with caramel. I could just keep going on and on. All chocolate makes me really happy, but only Jesus make, gives me joy. Bacon makes me pretty happy, too. <laughs> Bacon makes me happy. It makes me full. It makes me want to probably take a few aspirin, it, but... But only Jesus makes me complete. Fishing, Thad's not here, but fishing, makes, he make, that makes Thad happy. Thad is most happy when he's out there fishing. But when he talks about Jesus and men's group and shares his testimony, yeah, joy. That make, gives him joy. Anybody ride motorcycles in here? Oh, this, there's nothing better than riding down the road. There's nothing bad. That makes me just about as happy as any. You guys probably didn't even know I, I rode motorcycles. That makes me as happy as anything. But man, there's nothing like the joy of worshiping, of, of singing and praising God, of just opening my heart up and showing it to him. That, I think that, God, that gives God a proud dad moment, the one that, that you know, we really long to give him. And, and since we're made to do that, oh, we get filled with such great joy. Because we're wired that way. Even though it's hard, we're hardwired through the Holy Spirit to want to please him. Let's look at verse 12. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Now we kind of know what love is. It's more than a feeling, right? It takes obedience, sacrifice. We're not always going to feel like it. We know who it comes from. It comes from the Father through us. We know we're encouraged to remain in it. We're fully prepared to love like Jesus did because we're wired to do that since we belong to him. But there's a caveat. There's always an if. We always have a choice. God doesn't want automatons running around here. We always have to choose. We have to be willing to do it. We have to say yes, it's, and it's really every day sometimes it's it's every hour sometimes it's every moment saying yes to him we have to have to say yes to him in order to love like that here's here's one of my memory verses uh it's from first john four seventeen. this is how love is made complete among us so that we'll have confidence on the day of judgment in this world we are like jesus and every time I, I, I read that verse or I think about it, 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 that verse comes with a question maybe more than any other verse. Man, you just got back from Walmart. Were you Jesus at Walmart? Wow. You just went to the gas station. Were you Jesus to the, the clerk there that looked like she was having a hard day? You just drove by that dude and you had two cold bottles of water sitting right next to you and you didn't even stop. Were you Jesus at that moment right now? Scripture's penetrating. It gets you right here. It gets you right here when you start thinking about it. And I have to ask, so this isn't just about me. I have to ask everybody, how, how, how's your confidence? How's your confidence doing? Are you following Jesus or loving him like he loved us, like just when everybody's watching? Are you doing it just when you feel like it? 
are you doing it behind the wheel in Clarksville traffic on Trenton Road when they're redoing it? Hey, that's a hard place too. We need a new road. Somebody's got somebody's to do it. Are you doing it when your spouse isn't acting very lovable? Hmm. Are you there with me? There's lots of examples. It's not a feeling. Love is not a feeling. In order to remain in his love, it's going to take work. It's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take obedience. If we want to remain in his love, we've got to do the things that, that feed us, that keep us connected to the vine, that, that let us be good branches that bear great fruit, fruit that just will keep on coming. If we do those things, we're, we're going to keep loving like he loved us. And guess what? At the end, even though there's obedience and sacrifice, even though it's going to cost us something a little bit, even though all those things are true, we are made to receive joy when we do them. So when we do that, we get more satisfaction than anything else. We can have that moment of crawling up in dad's lap over and over again and having him say, you did a great job. I'm proud of you. That's my boy down there. I love him. He's doing whatever I told him to do. Are you there this morning? Are st is stuff running through your head like, ooh, I know sometimes when I didn't do that. That's all right. We're, we're, we're working some progress. We keep, we keep going. We keep praying. We keep reading. We keep spending time in the written word that points us to the living word. We keep doing that. We keep taking walks with him. We keep considering him and his word. We keep walking through it every day. He's going to make us more like him. It's his work. We just got to be ready and available to make it happen. So here's, here's the test. Because there's always a test, right? The test is coming. If you spend six weeks in class, most of the teachers are gone. If you spend six weeks in class, you're not going to spend six weeks in class without taking a test, right? The test is going to come. And for the Christian, it's probably going to come before you get out those doors, Right? Somebody's going to say something to you, bump into you, you're going to have an opportunity to not love like Jesus did, but we don't want to do that. Here's, here's the test. The test of remaining in Jesus' love is never just how we feel about it, but it's the distance you're willing to go for it. You want to be like Jesus? How far are you willing to go? Are you willing to keep walking in it when it costs you something? Are you willing to keep walking in it when you're not feeling like it? How about when that, that guy who you just really can't stand uh, is talking to you? Still going to be Jesus then? Driving through traffic? Still going to be Jesus? Because what are you going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow the test is coming. That guy at work that you can't get along with at all, he's going to be early tomorrow. And he's going to be in rare form because you know what? His favorite team lost the football game last night. And he is bent on making everybody mad that day at work and being especially divisive. Your wife tomorrow morning is going to be mad at you too, so don't think you're going to get away scot-free. You know why? Because you didn't turn your socks right side out before you put them in the hamper. And she hates that. Sorry, Marla. She hates that. And she is not going to be amenable at that, after that moment happens. That's, that's personal right there. Your husband's going to be mad at the kids. She's going to be upset. You know why? Because you let the kids have screen time and watch a movie instead of finish their chores. And now he's got to do it. Now He's not going to be happy. You're going to be filled with opportunities tomorrow to be Jesus to people, to love people like Jesus loved us in all kinds of facets, in all kinds of relationships. Wherever you go, you're going to be tested and have a chance to either do it whether you feel like it or not, make the sacrifice and be obedient. But, the, but look at the benefits. You will get the joy from doing it that, that is unfathomable to somebody who doesn't follow Jesus. It's, it's unbelievable. So when you get a chance, don't let that feeling of I don't want to or that it's gonna cost me something stop you. At the end of that road is unspeakable joy. Don't let it stop you. Be like Jesus. Remain in his love. Follow his commands, not because they're a list, but because you love him. And you're gonna do them just because of that. If you, 
you won't have to check stuff off if your heart's right. You'll be doing them anyways because you're following him with all you got. So whether you feel like it or not, remain in his love because we need to be ready. Start your day with prayer. Start in the word. Do your devotions and get ready to walk out from wherever you're at and be Jesus. Make the sacrifice and be obedient whether you like it or not. And the world can be a completely different place because remember the CNN and Fox News? turmoil yeah that's going on like it's, it's right over there not you angie it's right over there she's out in the hallway it's right outside the door that that turmoil that chaos it's going on right out there and and the peace that we have the peace that we've been given if we don't take it out there they're never going to get it and they need it we have the very words of hope that this world needs and if we're loving like jesus they'll see it clearly in the way we talk, the way we act, the way we live our lives, and the way we point people right up there. Can I pray for you this morning? I would love to do that. God, we're so